Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I put together 10 of my favorite coastal Halloween sign DIYs. I made all of these DIYs using supplies from the Dollar Tree and I have a little bit of everything today. We've got bones, skeletons, spiders, cats, ghosts. We've got jack-o'-lanterns. Everything you can think of to go with Halloween, but every single one of them is going to have a fun coastal vibe or theme. A lot of blues. I love to use blues with my coastal and with my fall decorations. Lots of sand and seashells like that. And I am ready to show you how we put all these together. The first sign we're gonna make is a welcome sign. Um, I'm using just a long sign from the Dollar Tree. It can be any long sign. And I'm just mixing my own chalk paint. I will try to remember to post the link below for the recipe. But it's super easy, you use calcium carbonate. Um, I get that on Amazon. I'll post an Amazon link for that as well. And I mix it with water and acrylic paint and it's a DIY chalk paint. And it's, it's a really inexpensive way to make paint. So the first thing I wanna do is, I'm gonna cover the what we already have on here, just so I have a finished back on my welcome sign. It was kind of already a fall sign, but I kinda wanted to make it something more coastal and do a fun idea to make a welcome sign. So I am just pulling the hanger off the back, just using a sanding block from the Dollar Tree to go around on that cheap vinyl and just a very inexpensive way to give a finished back to your Dollar Tree DIYs. And so we're gonna work on the back. We have that great plain surface to craft on and we are just gonna go over that with that DIY craft paint that we used. I believe this color is Caribbean blue. I'll try to double check on that. And give it a good coat. The other thing, you know, those thin signs from the Dollar Tree definitely can bow. So I'm kind of um, between coats trying to like uh, flatten it out a little bit so we have a great sign to work with. But it didn't really want to unbow. So I'm doing a little trick. I'm trying to iron it just with my easy press to see if I can get it um, to flatten out even more. Desperate attempt. Because <laughs> I don't really have another sign to layer it with but it worked, we have a flat sign now. Now I got these little plastic bones from the Dollar Tree and I thought we could spell out welcome out of bones. I thought that'd be great for Halloween. So I'm just kind of spelling it out roughly. We will have to trim these. I'm just gonna cut the ends off of the letters that need to go together and like kind of just have one joint in between like on the M and stuff like that. Cut both ends off there for the O because we have kind of um, the joints on the longer bones and the C similar to the E and just kind of trimming like that until it kind of makes more sense and it's not so crazy and scrambled. I also want to make sure that it all fits on that sign. Now, I don't really like the color of the bones. I don't think, I think they look kind of dark. And so again, I'm just mixing some of my homemade DIY chalk paint and I'm just gonna go over all of those bones and we are gonna paint them ivory. I thought that would be a better contrast against the blue. It's gonna stand out more than the brown color. And it definitely looks more like a bone to me, that color. I don't know why they made those quite so dark. But it's also gonna kinda, you know, take it up a notch, make it look a little bit less like I got these bones at Dollar Tree. So, now it's just time to start assembling our bones and we're gonna spell out welcome. So kind of one bone at a time. <laughs> we're gonna start gluing those on. I'm just using Gorilla Glue hot glue. 
And I think I cut those pretty good that they're gonna fit to size. The only thing you kinda have to be careful with here is just try not to burn yourself if you're using hot glue like this. But I just wanted to do a fun coastal Halloween sign for my entryway. I thought this would be the perfect touch. I do take it up a notch once I get the bones on here and I add even more coastal decor to this to make it super fun. Just finishing up my letters. When I get to the end, I'm kind of like, oh gosh, I hope this all fits. And it fit really, really nicely. So there we have Welcome, made out of little bones. Now, to make it a little bit more substantial and to frame it out, I'm just gonna use some of that white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, and we're just gonna glue with my hot glue gun around the edges a very simple um, coastal rope frame. I love making rope frames. I think they really take those cheap, thin Dollar Tree signs, make them look um, more substantial, a little bit more high end, so. Just gluing that all the way around in one piece. Just curves around the edges, cutting it here at the corner and kind of gluing it and blending that together. Um, sometimes a little hot glue at your seam helps a lot. Now I'm gonna make a hanger for the back and I'm just using twine and some hot glue and I'm gonna glue that on the back, just making sure that I get it on there kind of centered. I'm gonna use a few um, pieces of burlap ribbon on top of that hot glue to kind of reinforce that a little bit. Now I wanted to hang fishing net from it because I wanted to do kind of like a skeletal fishing scene. So I'm using just some of that fishing net from the Dollar Tree and I'm gluing that to the back of the sign with some more of that burlap ribbon. Kind of um, to the side, I want it to kind of hang like at a diagonal. I don't want it to hang like perfectly like square down. And so I'm gonna kind of double it up here and tie it and then glue that back to the top so it kind of hangs in that like triangular path. And then I found some great skeletal items to hang in our little welcome sign. I got these at Dollar Tree. I was so excited to find these. Um, this is a skeleton seahorse, which is adorable and perfect for coastal Halloween. But again, it's super brown, and so I'm gonna use some of that homemade ivory chalk paint and go all over. And then this is a skeleton mermaid that I also found at the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna give it the same skeletal makeover by making it more ivory. I just think that looks way better. Like. I don't know, that just reminds me more of what a skeleton bones would look like if you were to buy it. Um, these were just too brown for me. So just going in all the pieces. I was so excited to find this mermaid because I was trying to figure out how to make a skeleton mermaid and I was like, oh, I don't have a fishtail. I don't know how this is gonna work. And this was an amazing find at Dollar Tree. Now, just to make them look a little um, less stark, I'm just gonna distress a tiny bit with some antique wax by Waverly, but nothing too dark. I don't want it to turn brown again. I just wanna add a little bit of weathering to them. And I went ahead and painted a second seahorse ivory as well. Just using a paint pen to kind of darken up their eyes. So it kind of stands out contrasting a little bit more against the bones. Now, I was trying to decide, I have some of those metal words there, which one I'm gonna use, but then I found another skeleton from the Dollar Tree that I had, and it was a bat. So I thought I would add that too. It's not really coastal, but it's definitely Halloween, and I think this will look nicely with it. But we're gonna give it the same makeover that I gave on the others, with just a coat of that ivory chalk paint and darken the eyes a little bit. I always love by, we have a whole collection of those little skeleton creatures. And I chose the beware sign. I popped that in there. I just left it galvanized metal. And we put our little mermaid and our seahorses and our bat hanging in the fishnet. Okay, our next DIY, we're gonna make, um, I'm gonna use another one of those skeleton mermaids from the Dollar Tree and just a thrift flip sign that I found at the Dollar Tree and make kind of a 
Coastal uh, Mermaid um, Diorama. So I'm gonna, it's a chunky sign. I'm gonna kind of use it backwards like that. So I just used um, some contact paper on the back there just to have make it have a finished back. And we are gonna paint this blue. So I'm just using my chalk paint by Waverly. This is the color Agave. And we're gonna go all over that thrifted sign. I love buying real wood signs at the thrift store because if you get them like on the half off days and stuff like that, it can be just as cheap as the Dollar Tree and you're gonna get a really high quality wood sign like this. Um, cheaper than if you were to even make it. And we're just gonna go all over um, the inside and the outside of that frame. And this is gonna be the base for our mermaid. I kinda did all the back and I do cover a lot of that, but in case any of it shines through, we just have that all in blue. And I thought the little skeleton mermaid would look cute like laying down in there and I want to like build this out and make it look really cool. I'm not going to paint this one white but I don't want it to look like really cheap plastic shiny. I like that brown color because I think it looks creepy for what I'm doing here. So I'm just going over with some matte clear sealer to try to take away a little bit of the gloss. So just a quick coat of that. Then I thought we could start like filling this in, kind of trying to make it look like a creepy seabed where we would have a skeleton mermaid laying. So I'm using a combination of Spanish moss and reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree and just attaching that with hot glue inside of our like little shadow box. And then kind of filling in this side with the green reindeer moss just to make it, you know, more, a little bit more colorful than just all the Spanish moss. And then I found some flowers at the Target Dollar Spot that kind of looked ivory, kind of dead. And so I thought those would look kind of cool too because they kind of reminded me of something that would be in the ocean like a coral. And I'm just gonna snip off some of those to decorate that with as well. And I'm just gonna start gluing those about, kind of making it look just like the seafloor is what I wanted to go for with this. And that's one reason I left the skeleton brown is because I wanted it to be um, real natural looking. And so I'm just gonna use some stuff I had. This is like some real coral from the beach that I had picked up on a walk. And I'm gonna put some of that in there. So that will look cool. That would definitely look like the seafloor. Mix in some more of those flowers I got at Target. Just making sure it's all filled in. I have a little sea fan that I picked up at the beach a little red sea fan um, to add a little bit of color, but you can just kind of fill this out, you know, and um, use whatever you've got. I thought about using some stickers for some eyes. I thought that'd be kind of creepy, but I decided against it. Now I wanted my mermaid to have hair, and so I thought Raffia would be really cute for that. Um, it's gonna look real straw, it's gonna look kind of dead, it's gonna go with that same brown color as our little mermaid skeleton. And so we're just gonna glue that to the top of her hair, or her head, where her hair would be, and kind of pull her down in there. Now, I made these DIYs for Halloween last year, so I really hope they bring back these mermaid skeletons this year. They usually bring everything back at Dollar Tree every year, and the skeleton seahorses too, because I adore them. So just giving her a final few touches, maybe a few more hairs to cover up any bald spots she has there. Then I'm just gluing in some seashells from my seashell stash to kind of continue the look of the coastal floor there. And I love how she turned out. I think she's so creepy. My son got such a kick out of this DIY. He thought it was the coolest. He wanted me to keep it up year round. <laughs> I do really love how she turned out. Okay, our third Coastal Halloween sign is gonna be a spiderweb sign. And I'm gonna use one of these black chalkboards from the Dollar Tree. I love these because they're very thick and nice signs they don't bow. And um, the only challenge usually is just getting that tag off the back. The back is like the 
you know, black surface, super easy to work with. And I'll just cover up what was originally on the front. It's one of those like, um, like growth or grade uh, chalkboards they have at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just covering that with some more of that cheap contact paper and using a sanding block to go around all the edges just so our project will have a finished back. And I'm gonna use a couple different colors. I'm gonna use um, that Agave Chalk Paint by Waverly mixed with Ivory to give me a lighter blue because sometimes that Agave can dry a little bit darker than I would like for a beachy decor. And I'm just gonna, still gonna have to go over that with a couple of coats, even though it's chalk paint because of that black surface is kind of dark. So I'm just trying to brighten that up a little bit. Then I want it to look beachy, of course. I'm using a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and some ivory chalk paint. Just working in one direction, following that up with a baby wipe and just distressing all over to give this um, kind of a beachy vibe. Now you gotta be careful though, because as you can see, I um, used my baby wipe a little too hard and took off some of the paint. So I'm just touching that up a little bit with some more paint. And I'm just gonna pop a hole through that twine and use uh, the twine hanger. And we're gonna tie the twine in the front so it'll hang nicely against the wall. And we have a perfect background for this spider web sign that I got at Dollar Tree. I love these plain wood signs, especially for holidays like Halloween. They're so fun to DIY yourself. And you don't have to worry about any glitter, right? So I'm just using Antique Wax by Waverly. And we are just simply staining this beautiful wood spider web going around all the edges. Now I wanted that framed out and then we're also gonna go ahead and stain the spider part as well. Now for the web, I wanted it to be white. Um, you know, like a spider web. And so I'm just using that ivory paint and a tiny brush, and we're just gonna go in and paint all of those parts ivory. I didn't bother like taping it off or anything like that. If there is some antique wax that I paint over with the ivory, it'll look fine. It'll just make it look a little bit distressed. And you know me, I pretty much distress everything with my coastal farmhouse vibes. But I love decorating coastal and the blue colors and everything for all seasons. And I think you can make it work with anything, even Halloween. And I like that brown stain with the, with the ivory. I think that's gonna look really nice contrasted against that blue sign that we just put together. Just making sure I have all of my exposed areas covered with that ivory paint and giving that a quick dry before we go ahead and attach that. But I wanted it to look a little bit more coastal first. So I'm using that same ivory, just distressing all over the antique wax parts that I had stained and just giving them a little bit more of a weathered look. It makes it look a little bit more like driftwood to me. I'm gonna use some of the Dollar Tree wood letters and I thought we would spell out the word eek. I thought that'd be a fun word for a spider web. And I'm just gonna paint them with some ivory chalk paint by Waverly. I love these wood letters. I used to have a hard time finding them and my Dollar Tree has been a lot better about getting them in lately. And um, they're such an inexpensive way to a letter your sign. So we're ready to attach the signs together. I'm just using hot glue to attach the frame of the spider web to the blue sign, leaving some room at the bottom so we can spell out the word eek. Just slightly overlapping a little bit there on the top. And I thought it would be cute to put eek down here like over in the corner. And so I'm simply gonna glue those on as well. I find the Gorilla Glue hot glue works great for wood too. And it is quick and easy to use hot glue for everything. And I love that wireless glue, um, glue gun. It is um, really helped me out. And this is how it looks. Isn't it beautiful? I love it because it's creepy for Halloween like a spider, but it's still really pretty. Okay, our next DIY. I am gonna use one of those wood cats from the Dollar Tree together with one of these Target dollar spot square signs. 
Um, I got that on clearance last year at um, Target Dollar Spot, but I'm wondering if they're going to have those to share because I haven't seen them. They have them a lot throughout the year, but we will see. Now I'm popping off the little jack-o'-lantern face on the pumpkin because I wanted to paint this and I'm having to use heat and a, you know, trying to like wedge that off. They, this was kind of hard to take apart. I wanted to paint the different things, different colors, and I thought it would be easier to do this, but maybe not. <laughs> With a lot of perseverance, I was able to take the different parts apart. <laughs> Now here is our little, we're gonna make it a little black cat. I don't want it to be a hanging sign though, so I'm just using some nail fill to try to fill in some of the holes on there. So we have a wooden cat. I am gonna go ahead and keep that pumpkin because that's definitely gonna go with my fall decor. Now, of course, I wanted to be a black cat for Halloween, right? So I'm using, um, this is just black. It is the Chalk Paint by Waverly in the color ink. And it gives me that nice dark color for a black cat and just kind of painting all over. And I had this as part of my black cat coffee bar last fall and I loved how everything turned out. It was so fun. Just filling in any chunks that were missing in that little pumpkin so we can go ahead and um, color it as well. I'm gonna use a combination of the agave and the ivory again to give me that same light blue color like we used on the last sign and just paint the little pumpkin. And I just want it to look like a pumpkin, so I'm just gonna draw on with my paint pen some little lines on there. I'm not gonna add that little jack-o'-lantern face back on there. I'm just gonna leave it as a pumpkin. I'm gonna weather it a little bit with a little bit of ivory a chalk paint and a chunky brush. And I'm gonna weather a little black cat a little bit as well because I just can't resist. <laughs> Wiping off any excess paint with a baby wipe. I just like everything to stress, but I don't want it to get too um, light. I don't want it to be gray. So I kind of go back and forth with the ivory and the black until I'm happy with it. It's a fine balance sometimes when you're distressing it. Now I want um, my little black cat to have blue eyes. And so I also painted a um, wood domino from the Dollar Tree, that same color blue that we used on the pumpkin. Now on the square wood sign from the Dollar Tree, I'm gonna leave it the wood, I like that, but you can see the black border around the edges. These signs are great because they're so thick from the Target Dollar Spot, but I'm just gonna use some Dollar Tree rope, this is a thinner brown one, and glue that all along the edges. That's gonna give me another coastal touch to this sign, and it's also gonna cover up the black parts of the sign. I hope they bring these back though for fall because these are great signs and they already have a hanger on them and everything. Just cleaning up any of the fuzzies with a lighter. And we can start putting this little black cat sign together. So I wanted to put the little domino behind the cat face so the blue eyes would kind of shine through. You can kind of use whatever you've got. I've had a hard time finding these wood dominoes at my Dollar Tree for a while now. But I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down. I love them because they're super easy to cut down with scissors um, and you can make them any size you want. I'm also gonna use a few more of those um, on the back just to kind of make the cat stick out a little bit, make it look a little bit more 3D and it won't be uneven from the domino behind the eyes. Now for the pumpkin, I wanted to um, just finish up the stem of the pumpkin just by wrapping it in some Dollar Tree twine. Using a little of a hot glue when you get down to the end of it. And it's such an easy way to give a little coastal pumpkin stem for our little blue pumpkin. I'm gonna attach it here in front using another one of those wood dominoes to kind of fill up any space and to kind of level it out as I kind of glue that on to the front of my black cat. Now, I thought my pumpkin looked a little bit plain, so I thought I would decorate it up a little bit with some of these little craft wood cutouts from the Dollar Tree and maybe a little seashell here at the stem. I'm gonna use this little dolphin. So it kind of looks like there's a little dolphin cutout on our little pumpkin. 
and a few seashells over here as well, just attaching those with hot glue. Just decided to do a little finger bow with some twine just to finish off that pumpkin and to give a cute little final touch. And this is how my little black cat looks. He's so cute. Now I thought, you know, he needed a little bit more distressing. And so <laughs> there I go again. And I wanted to make him, you know, just a little extra special. So I thought I would give him a wood bead hanger instead of the one that came on the sign. I know there was already a hanger on there, but this is some of the wood beads. I got these last fall at the Dollar Tree. I see that they've brought them back. I haven't found them at my store, but I did see them at dollartree.com. They're a little longer and they are a little smaller than the ones they had at the Crafter Square. And I'm just gonna use some of that wood bead garland to tie off a new hanger using the old hanger as reference for how long I would want it. And it's just gonna give another little fun touch to this DIY. Now, I love it. That's so cute. And I'm just gonna use my paint pen to kind of touch up the pumpkin a little bit. I had used like a blue color on there. I found I didn't think that you could um, see that very much. And my paint pen was not working too well. So I switched to a tiny brush and just kind of touched that up a little bit. I just want that little pumpkin in front to look really coastal and very coastal farmhouse for fall. And distress it a little bit as I go as well. Now let me show you how this looks hanging above my coffee bar. I hung it on the wall, kind of behind my little rope black cat that I DIY'd. And I think it's such a subtle Halloween decoration. It goes with my coastal decor, but it's also super cute for Halloween. Okay, our next set of signs, I'm gonna use three of these long signs. Mine were Halloween, but they can be whatever you have, just three long signs from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna use a paint roller from the Dollar Tree as well. And I wanna do like a set of signs, and I wanna do skeletons. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start covering these. I thought I would use the back. So I'm just gonna cut out some more of that cheap contact paper. I love that for the backs of these signs if you need to cover up all the crazy business that's going on there and cut out one of these for each one of my three signs. And I'm just smoothing that on the back and using my sanding block to give me a perfect cut all along the edges. Anytime you're working with the Dollar Tree side that's got the glitter and all the different stuff on there, it's gonna be so hard to get that off. It's just always so much easier to work on the back of these signs. So we got the first sign covered and this is the second one. I'm gonna do the same exact thing. And I kinda wanna do like um, some blue and white signs and cover them with skeletons. Now this one had loose paper, so I said, oh, it's loose, I might as well just tear it off. Well, there's always a part that is glued on, and so I did have to work a little bit on that, but you can also do that as well, if the paper is loose. Now, just using my Dollar Tree roller, I am using ivory chalk paint and going all over. These long signs, if you use a little roller like this, um, it's just an easy way to give them a quick paint job. And I'm doing this same thing here with this sign as well. And now on the third sign, I want it to be blue. So I'm using the Agave Chalk Paint by Waverly to give me this great beachy blue color. And I'm gonna use my Cricut on this. I will try to find the fonts that I used um, for this sign. I'm not sure if I saved it, but I should be able to at least find the fonts. I didn't used to know how to share Cricut files, but I do know how to do it now, but only if I have it saved. Now I got two of these little wooden um, skeletons from the Dollar Tree. One was broken, but that's okay. We're gonna make it work. And we're gonna paint this skeleton, that agave blue. Now I don't really need the little metal hooks 
um, that are attaching most of the joints together because I'm going to have a wood sign to attach this to. And I think they're going to get in the way for a painting. And so I'm just going ahead and removing those. Um, I do end up having to use a few in the final, but for painting purposes, I just want all of the wood skeleton pieces just laid out flat on my surface so that I can paint them all blue. And I thought blue would be a fun touch instead of doing the skeleton in ivory, um, to do it in blue would be fun. So I'm using my roller and going all over with that agave. And I'm just able to paint a lot of those little wood surfaces all at once. These are so cute. I think they're so much cuter than the plastic skeletons that they have at the Dollar Tree. Okay, we have the rib cages. We got a few more parts here. I'm trying to get it all on my mat so we can get all of those blue. And then we're gonna lay out our blue skeletons on our ivory signs. They look so nice on there. Just putting the skeleton back together. I was trying to decide if I was gonna use uh, the hooks, but I don't think it's really necessary for the parts that I can glue down. So again, I'm just using Gorilla Glue hot glue. And um, I'm gonna do both of them at the same time so I can kind of make sure I get them even. Um, that one was broken, but it was no problem because I just glued both the pieces down. So next up is our little rib cages. We can glue those down as well. And I wanna do a his and her skeleton. I thought that'd be really fun for this. I have a fun um, idea for um, the middle sign for what it can say. And we're gonna go ahead and glue down the legs. And again, just leaving a little space between the joints since I'm not using the little metal hooks. Kind of having them stand the same way. Now with the arms, I can only like kind of put the shoulder on there and the hand. So I did have to use the hooks for the elbows. Um, to make sure that those joints stuck together. And they're just little metal rings, so super easy to put back on there. And I'm just gluing the shoulder and the hands to the sign, because that's what's gonna fit, and have the little elbows hang off. Now, I, I didn't want them doing the same exact things with their arms, so I'm gonna have this one kind of do something different with its arms. So I put the metal hook back on there and glued that arm like on the hip, and then we'll have this arm kind of going up like it's kind of waving or dancing, if you will. <laughs> Just to add a little bit more whimsy to these signs. Now you know I want to distress it, so I'm going to use a chunky brush and some ivory chalk paint and just lightly distress all over our little blue skeleton just to make it look even more coastal and fun. And we're gonna do the same thing with this one. And then the middle sign, the third sign, we, we painted agave. So I'm gonna have that sign hang in between the two skeleton signs for a set. I'm just using my Cricut tool to poke a hole in that vinyl in the back, using some Dollar Tree twine, tying knots in the front. I'm just gonna make hangers for these signs. And just doing the same thing over on this one. We have two of our signs are ready to go for this set. Now this is me measuring and distressing that agave sign. I'm distressing it with a little bit of ivory to give me that beachy vibe before I go on there with vinyl. And I am using, this is stencil vinyl that I get on Amazon. I will post a link below for the kind that I like. And I just cut this out with my Cricut. Using some fun fonts that I used, or could find on Cricut. And I will try to post these because they're kind of distinctive. Um, if you wanted to recreate this, you can see it's got a very fun, like spider web pattern, which was a little challenging to weed, but Basically, we're gonna have this sign say, till death do us part. And then I found this death word in a coffin. So that's kind of cool. 
And I'm gonna be able to hand paint this now on our long sign that we have for the middle. I also get this on Amazon. It is a paper transfer paper. I love it for transferring any kind of Cricut vinyl or stencils like this. I think it works really well and it does not um, interfere with any of my painting. So I'm just gonna line the vinyl up, the stencil vinyl up and pull off my paper. Trying to make sure I get that stencil down as good as I can. My favorite use for my Cricut is making hand painted signs. If you don't have one though, you can always use stickers from the Dollar Tree and lay those down and um, you can kind of do the same thing. But this allows me to customize it so well for Halloween. So I used a little painter's tape at the top and the bottom to make sure I don't get any paint on those parts. And I'm using my ivory chalk paint and my roller from the Dollar Tree and just going all over with that foam roller and hoping that I don't get too much bleeding because I did not use any Mod Podge or blue first. And then I'm just gonna go in and weed out all the vinyl that is left from my stencil still on there. The spider webs are really cute. Again, they were kind of a pain to weed, but it is a fun Halloween touch to these signs. So I'm just taking my time and weeding all the rest of that vinyl out. And the roller actually worked really well as far as bleeding. Just sanding that up a little bit and going back in and um, just distressing it with some of that original agave blue, just to give it that weathered coastal look that I like. Until death do us part, so we'll have a his and a her um, blue skeleton to hang on each side of this sign. Like that, so cute. Now to make this one a girl, I found, this is just a little pre-made bow that I got on clearance at Walmart. And I'm just gonna use that and cut off the tails, just make a little simple little blue bow for her hair. And we have a his and her till death do us part. Skeletons, I think these are so fun for Halloween. What do you think? My husband got a kick out of it for sure. <laughs> Hey guys, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about our private Facebook group. I will post a link below. It's a great way for you to find out what everybody else is working on and to get great ideas. You guys are so creative. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest at Crafty Beach on YouTube, and I would love to see you over there. We are halfway through our Coastal Halloween signs, and this one is gonna be a ghost sign. I got this ghost sign at Dollar Tree, but I wasn't a fan of all the glitter, of course. It's got a cool shape, which is gonna be kinda hard to cover the back, so I just did a square of that contact paper just to kinda finish the back. And we're gonna work on the back. So I am painting it. This is, I think this is Caribbean blue. I'm just using acrylic paint. This might even be turquoise. I think this might be turquoise. <laughs> I used to get this acrylic paint at Target and they clearanced it all out and they only have the more expensive acrylic paints at my Target now, which is a bummer. So I just did a good coat. I'm trying to cover up that brown background and um, have to go over with a second coat just to make sure that we get a nice blue surface for our sign. Now this was the ghost that was already on the sign and it's a great wood shape of a ghost that we can DIY. So I just try to get the adhesive off the back of it so that we can paint the back and I'm just gonna paint it with some ivory acrylic and give ourselves a little white ghost for our little blue sign. So sometimes when you may, you know buy these signs um, the seasonal signs from the Dollar Tree. You can still use the pieces, like I'm using this for that fun ghost shape for the front of it, um, and just kind of disregarding all the glitter and stuff they already had on it. Just distressing the ghost a little bit with some antique wax by Waverly to give it that fun coastal vibe. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna distress this blue sign with ivory acrylic, just working in one direction and using a baby wipe to give myself a distressed look. And then, I thought we would spell out the word boo. 
And I just picked up these wood letters at Walmart. They're, you know, bigger than the Dollar Tree letters, but you can kind of use whatever you have. But then I thought, you know, they were a little too big. So I decided to use some of these wood letters from the Dollar Tree. This one is one that actually says boo with an exclamation point. And we're gonna paint that ivory to go with our little ivory ghost and distressing with some antique wax by Waverly to make it go together. Now for a little ghost, I'm just gonna make some simple little ghost eyes with a black paint pen. And we can start putting this little cute little ghost sign together. I wanna distress the eyes, but not too much. And I'm just gonna glue our little ghost down. No glitter on this side and glue on our little boo word as well. And I really love blue signs with like white writing for my coastal decor. I think it looks really beachy and fun. And I'm just distressing all over with a little bit more antique wax by Waverly and a little bit of ivory until I get a really, a simple level of distressing that I like. Now I thought the perfect final touch to this coastal Halloween sign would be seashells. So I'm just grabbing some seashells from my collection. I have a lot of seashells from the beach, but I also have a lot of seashells from Dollar Tree. It's such a cheap way to get seashells. And I'm just gonna glue those on the side. And I think they're the perfect final touch to this little coastal Halloween sign. It turned out so cute. And this is how it looks on my wall. I love it. Okay, we haven't done any jack-o'-lanterns yet, so let's try a jack-o'-lantern. I'm gonna use another one of these thicker um, signs from uh, the Target Dollar Spot, and then I'm gonna use one of these wood jack-o'-lanterns from uh, the Dollar Tree. I don't want the jack-o'-lantern to be a hanging sign, so I'm just using a little spackle to fill in the holes from the hanger. I want this to kind of be more of a traditional jack-o'-lantern, so we're gonna make it orange, but we're gonna weather it to make it look coastal. So I'm using pumpkin chalk paint by Waverly and going all over the back parts of the pumpkin. It's got the little raised parts for the jack-o'-lantern face, but I want those to be dark, kind of like shadowy, like they would be on a real jack-o'-lantern. So I'm gonna use a black, this is chalk paint by Waverly in the color of ink. And I'm just gonna use a brush and paint the little face back on the jack-o'-lantern, super easy. You could also do this as blue if you wanted. It would be really cute too. I love a blue jack-o'-lantern. Just kind of touch up any areas I may have got a little black paint. With the raised wood on there, it's kind of easy to stay in line, but you can kind of mess it up a little bit. But I still wanted to look coastal, so we're gonna distress all over just with ivory chalk paint and a chunky brush and follow that up with a baby wipe, working in one direction. And then we're gonna glue the little jack-o'-lantern onto that wood sign. It's got that great wood background. And that looks super beachy and super easy. And this is how our little coastal jack-o'-lantern sign turned out. I think he's so cute. I love him. Okay, our next Coastal Halloween sign is going to be a skeleton sign. So this is just a thrift flip sign, something I found at the thrift store on half price, and it's a nice wood sign, and so I just have to cover up the writing that's on there. So I'm going over with chalk paint that works really well to cover up writing, and ivory until I can't really read that anymore. I don't want this sign to be ivory, but I'm just trying to cover up that writing and that's the best way to do it. So I want it to be agave, the blue color, um, chalk paint by Waverly. So we're gonna go all over this sign and paint it blue. I found some great hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil skeletons at the Dollar Tree and I thought they needed a sign to go with them and so that is what we're gonna make with this DIY. So we painted all the sides and the front that beautiful agave color. And again, I'm using some of that stencil vinyl that I get on Amazon and I made a stencil. So I did the little skeleton faces for the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. 
And then I also cut out the word evil <laughs> to go with that, to make a little sign to go with those cute little figurines. They're so adorable for the Dollar Tree. Now, I can't remember if I saved this on Cricut, but I will try to find the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil design. Hopefully I'll be able to share that with you. If so, it'll be in the description below this video. And I'm using some of that paper, transfer paper. Um, this one, I had it on the wrong setting and it cut all the way through. And, but that's okay. It's all still there. And so we're gonna use that to attach our stencil vinyl to our sign. And so we can do a fun hand painted sign. So again, doing the same thing with the little skeletons. So great. You know, I have a subscription to Cricut Design Space now. I don't use it a lot. I don't know if it's really worth um, keeping all the time, but I do like it when I have a specialized project and they have exactly what I like already in there. And there we go. So we put evil on top and the little skeletons on the bottom. And I'm just gonna use one of those little stencil dauber sponges from the Dollar Tree and some ivory chalk paint and go all over our stencil and do a very fun hand painted sign. So I'm just gonna daub all over until I, you can kind of see if the blue starting to come back through until I have a nice ivory coverage all over the little cutout areas. And this stencil vinyl holds up pretty well, even for a heat gun to dry it like this, as long as you don't get too close. Now it's the final reveal. Let's see how this turned out. We're gonna pull off our stencil. And it turned out really great. So we just have to go in with a weeding tool and weed out any of the stencil vinyl that's still left. And a perfect little sign that cost me like a dollar for the sign and a little bit for the paint. Just gonna touch up a few areas where I thought there was a little bit of bleeding just with a tiny brush. And these are the little skeletons from the Dollar Tree that I got to go in front of them. I'm gonna use a little riser from the Target Dollar Spot and kind of put these together as a set and I think it'll turn out so cute. Now, I, of course, I gotta distress it a little bit, so I'm gonna distress the ivory with a little bit more of that agave and a little bit of ivory on top of that just to give it a final coastal feel. Just because, you know me, I distress everything. <laughs> and this is how it looks on my shelf, paired together with those cute little figurines. I did them in the same see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil pattern next to my haunted beach house. Okay, we have another spider sign. I found this spider web sign with a spider on it from the Dollar Tree, and I thought we would take it up a notch. I like the shape for a spider web. I'm just trimming up any of the pieces that were kind of sticking outside the spider web. I just want it to look like a spider web. And I'm gonna cover the glittery decorated sign with just some um, cheap vinyl and trying to a, uh, sand that off, even though it's a little bit more of a regular shape, it's not too bad. And then I thought it would probably be easier just to go ahead and cut it with scissors, and it totally was. This vinyl from the Dollar Tree is so cheap, it's very easy to cut. So I'm just gonna kinda try to get it as close as I can to that to finish off the back because it's just such a, a weird shape. And I'm gonna make this into a cute little spider web sign complete with a spider. I picked up one of those little toy spiders there from the Halloween section at Dollar Tree as well. I'm gonna mix together two colors, that agave with ivory to give me that nice light beachy blue and going over the back of our little cobweb with that blue color. I thought we would do a cobweb, um, like a white cobweb with uh, like a blue background like that. So just giving that a quick dry with my dryer and going over with a little bit more to make sure that you can't see any of that brown backing on the sign coming through. Now I'm using my white paint pen and I'm gonna try my best to uh, draw a spider web back on here using like the little points that are already on there and just connecting one side to the other. 
pretty easy with straight lines. And then I'm going to do the sides, use that as a reference to connect all the dots, excuse the head, <laughs> and connect all those. Now I'm going in with a little ivory chalk paint to kind of paint a um, cute little edge along the edge using that paint pen as a reference to give me a nice border here, just with a tiny brush from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna use those paint pen lines as reference to paint on my little spider web. I find having the paint pen reference makes it a lot easier to paint because um, I'm not that great at freehand painting like this. But using a paint pen is super easy. Now I'm gonna kind of fill in the little areas between the webs with just little arches like around the edges to finish off our little cobweb pattern. And this was definitely easier to paint than you would think. And I like our little coastal spider web. I think it's coming together very cute. I'm gonna get that paint dry and then of course, distress it with a little bit of ivory all over to give it that cool, fun, beachy vibe. And just follow that up with a baby wipe to take off any of the excess. I'm gonna use the existing hole and some twine just to make a simple hanger for it. And then I got these spiders from the Dollar Tree. You probably can't get them in brown, or but I got them in black. And so I'm just using some um, tan chalk paint just to try to make my spider brown to kind of go more with my sign. Then the, I don't want the contrast of the black, but you can kind of use whatever you want. But these little furry spiders from the Dollar Tree are super cute and creepy. So I kind of want it to look like a brown tarantula. And using a smaller brush to kind of get in any of the smaller areas that I couldn't get in there with a foam brush. And I thought a spider like this attached to the web would be even cuter than like a flat wood spider that was like on there before. So once I get my, my spider painted brown, I'm gonna be thorough. I was afraid that you'd be able to see the underside through it because it's gonna be kind of sticking out from the web. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the underside of my spider brown as well. And you know, I do think they do have brown spiders. So if you do want a brown spider on there, just be sure to look for one at Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna attach my spider to the spider web with some hot glue, kind of at an angle like that. I think that looks really cute. And then I thought it needed something, I needed a word, and so I'm gonna use one of these metal words from the Dollar Tree. I thought beware would be cute. And I, but I didn't think you'd really be able to see it. So I'm using some antique wax by Waverly and distressing in one direction. I kind of want this to look more like a wood sign and less like a metal sign. And I thought that that wasn't quite enough. So I'm going over that same sign with some ivory first. Then I can go over it with that antique wax by Waverly and um, maybe it'll look a little bit more like wood and I just don't want any of that metal showing through. You can also use Mod Podge, which really makes the galvanized metal really easy to paint. That is a tip I got from one of you crafty beach bums because you guys are so wise. I love the galvanized metal things from the Dollar Tree, but a lot of times I do like to paint them. And so I'm just gonna attach the little beware sign to our little coastal spider web. 
And this DIY is complete. I think it turned out so cute. I love the blue colors, yet it's creepy for Halloween. Okay, are you guys ready for our last Coastal Halloween sign DIY? We're going to redo this cute little ghost sign that I found at the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to pop off the boo word. He's super cute and glittery and such, but I wanted him to look like a sand ghost. So I want to cover this little guy with sand. So I'm just making sure that I got all the adhesive off there from where he had a word on there. And I'm just gonna kind of paint over his little face with some ivory chalk paint. And then I just decided to take that ivory chalk paint and paint all over to give me a base coat for our sand, for our sand ghost. And the shape is great. Now put something down if you're gonna work with sand cause it's gonna get messy. I'm gonna use, I like to get this Target School glue, I'm going all over with that, and we're using that white sand from the Dollar Tree and gluing that to our little ghost. That Target school glue right now is on sale for 25 cents, so I'm definitely stocking up for the whole year. I'm gonna dump off any excess sand that's still on there, and I'm gonna follow that up with some of that, air, that spray glue from the do Dollar Tree at the Crafter Square and go over more with that white sand. So we have another good coat of sand on there and sprinkling off the excess and spraying with more and filling in until I have a good coverage of sand. I want all of my little ghosts to be covered in sand. And I keep going until I'm happy with it. Then I thought I would use another one of these boo signs from the Dollar Tree, I'm gonna paint this one blue with this fun turquoise color. And I'm gonna make a little hanger for our sand ghost, being very careful not to knock off all the sand that we worked so hard to glue to our little ghost. Just tying off a simple knot. Now I thought we could make the little ghost face with seashells instead of paint. So I found two a kind of um, oval shape seashells for the eyes and just attaching those with hot glue. When you're gluing onto sand though, you have to make sure that you get either enough glue on there that you can get down to the sign. Otherwise it's just gonna glue to the sand, the sand and it's gonna fall right off. I'm gonna use another seashell for its mouth. Kind of upside down, I thought that looked like a fun ghost expression. Again, making sure you use a lot of hot glue and press that down so you can get that attached. Now, I want it to say boo, but I don't really want to glue the boo to the sand, so I thought I would have him hold it. So I'm just using some Dollar Tree twine, and I'm gluing that to the back of our little boo wood sign that we made. And then we can use that for his little ghost arm so that he can hang that down in front of him. So I'm just gonna attach that to the back of the ghost sign with a little dot of hot glue on the twine. And that definitely solved that problem. So I'm just gonna cut off the excess twine. And we have a little sand ghost. Isn't he adorable? I love the little touches of the seashells. He's so fun. Okay guys, we've made it through all 10 of our Coastal Halloween DIYs today, and we're ready for the final reveal. But first, I wanna thank the following Crafty Beach Bums for sending me super thanks underneath my videos. It's a simple way to support your favorite YouTuber with a tip of as little as $2. And also to these Crafty Beach Bums for buying me a coffee. I always have a link to that in all my videos, and it's a great way to support a small YouTube channel like mine. Okay, it's time for the final reveal. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, comment your favorite DIY below, and don't forget to subscribe. We're on our road to 10K.